Hello and welcome back to Exeter Alera. You're watching part six of the uh, build series and uh, in this video I'm going to be showing you how I built all my uh, station platforms. So when it comes to constructing platforms uh, there's many a ways of doing it. Uh, you can readily buy various um, platform kits, uh, whether that be in the lines of Pico or Metcalf cardboard kits. Um, they're perfectly fine. There is uh, off-the-shelf items, as in Hornby, uh, click-together platforms. Again, I find them more sort of aimed at the uh, beginners and uh, people with uh, train set type layouts. Another alternative is to uh, obviously build your own platforms, as in like what I've done to mine. Uh, there's many a ways of doing it and uh, many of materials are quite useful for building platforms. What I've got here is uh, two examples of what uh, people often use, uh, whether that be plywood or actual pieces of uh, stripped uh, plain square edge timber uh, to the correct size. Uh, also a lot of people um, use MDF, again another decent material to use for platforms. However the only disadvantages that I find with uh, using things like sheet materials or timber is that you'll spend a lot of time trying to plane little bits and pieces off to get them to fit uh, within your track plan whether you've got curved tracks uh, you've got to try and get it so that your trains don't strike the platforms as they're um, entering in and out of curves etc so to build my platforms I've avoided using um, any timber or sheet material simply because the time that it takes to actually uh, prepare that piece of timber uh, so it actually fits. And um, what I'm going to be using is simply two pieces of plasterboard. So the reason I picked uh, plasterboard to build my platforms is um, it's simply easy to use, um, it's quite affordable as in the fact that it costs no more than probably about six or seven pound for quite a large sheet um, in comparison to MDF, plywood and all the other uh, timber and sheet materials. Uh, it's also relatively easy to work with as well, meaning that you only basically need a Stanley knife to cut the stuff rather than having all the necessary power tools uh, that you would do with um, sheet materials. Also, as it's plasterboard, it uh, comes um, in a surface ready to paint and you get more of a uh, natural finish um, when it comes to painting your platforms. I find that um, when you paint things like plywood, you still end up with a kind of a timber finish um, in terms of once a finished surface of uh, paint's been applied to it. As you can see with the uh, platform closest to the camera, the surface of this once this uh, had its top coat would actually give a better appearance uh, of being a natural kind of tarmac finish rather than that of a timber that you'll get with um, any sheet or uh, timber materials if you decide to use those for your platform. So it, it has its uh, advantages overall with uh, timber and plywood. Uh, so very useful to use. Uh, and also I find that not a lot of people have actually They've actually used it to build platforms, so it's a nice, a fresh idea as well. And hopefully, my methods and style of how I put mine down, um, people will be interested in that and uh, may use the same idea. So the plasterboard that I've actually bought for my platforms, um, the thickness of uh, each sheet is actually 9.5 millimeters, and uh, doubled up together, that gives me a overall height of 19 millimeters, which is the perfect height for platforms. The finished height of all of my platforms will actually be 19.5 millimeters uh, once I've finished all of them and um, all of my rolling stock sits nicely above them or next to each platform with exception of the uh, Mark II um, A Backman coaches which actually do in reality sit too low for what they are. All of my Backman Mark II coaches will be uh, having their ride height raised ever so slightly by probably about a millimetre to make sure that they sit perfectly. Alongside um, the platforms, I took a lot of uh, measurements into account when I actually 
laid all of my track um, that if you use plasterboard for platforms and your track is laid directly onto the baseboard you may find that all of your platforms may sit too high uh, so with a bit of measurement a bit of calculation I decided to uh, use three millimeter cork underneath my track raising the height of my rails so they sat perfectly uh, when trains were actually up and in the station So always worth checking out and uh, making sure that your calculations are right um, in terms of whatever you use, whether that be plasterboard or you decide to use any timber or sheet materials for any of your platforms. So to get started on the platforms, um, what I'm gonna do is work out exactly where my station ramps will begin and where they will end. So I'm gonna allow a reasonable size that's about four inches for uh, station ramps and uh, to mark out the distance between the two rails so my platforms fit perfectly I'm going to use the longest coach with a marker pen positioned to the side and then just draw a line all the way down When it comes to uh, the curvature of the track and um, obviously uh, making sure that the platforms have enough clearance by the side of the coaches, it's always worth making sure that you position the pen in the uh, correct place on, on the coach. So as this has got a curve facing this way and my platform is going to be on this side, you position the pen in the centre of the coach. as it will be the centre of the coach which will be the closest to the platform. So I've positioned the coach here on this side and uh, this section of track actually curves in that way and as the platform's on this side you put the pen at the end of the coach as this uh, the back end and the front end of the coaches are the points where they'll be closest to the platform with the centre part being further away. So that's my marker, that's the actual maximum width I now need to uh, trim my plasterboard to so it fits within that red line all the way up. Now I've specifically picked the middle uh, platform to show you guys how I built these uh, simply because this is the uh, probably the most curved platform out of all three. Um, with the exception of the back edge of that one. So it makes sense to show you how I'm going to mark and trim all the uh, plasterboard to fit. Okay, so with the platforms, as you see, I've marked the lines and I've also put a mark just there, which will enable me to know where my platforms at the end before the ramp begins. So I'm going to move on to getting the first layer of plasterboard fitted. And what I've got is uh, some pieces of plasterboard all cut from one big long length, um, roughly about um, two inches wider than the actual width of the station. And uh, cut these into lengths of about eight inches. And uh, made sure as well that all four edges uh, has the exposed uh, plasterboard edge rather than the paper that you get on um, all the edges. Uh, before I get cracking and show you how I'm going to trim all these up to the right size, it might be worth noting that this is a very useful tool um, for planing the edges of plasterboard down and uh, we'll show you how that works uh, once I get started with the uh, the first sections of the platform base. Okay so with the first section I'm um, just going to line the one side 
against where the line is that I drew on the baseboard and the second side I'm going to actually mark where the track is as it's on a curve I will join these two lines up and then following the line uh, making sure that your blades are fresh and sharp let's just follow that line And that's trimmed, simple as that. So using the Mark III coach again, I'm just going to use that to the best of, of my ability, just to be able to recreate the line back onto there again. Again, what I'm going to do is just trim that excess off again with a Stanley knife. So using the, the surfhorn plane, as it's technically known, is a just enables me to tidy up the edges. Obviously, it's chipped off a little bit at the bottom, but that's not a problem. And there we go. So we've got the perfect clearances now uh, that's required. So I'm going to continue all the way along in that direction and get the rest of these all fitted. Okay, so I've marked all those all the way along and I'm now just going to follow the same process and just trim all these back nice and neatly. So there we go, that's those pieces now perfectly trimmed all the way along. And now time to um, prepare the top of these to uh, get the top section put down on top of that. So I've got myself some PVA bond glue and I'm just going to give all this a good covering all the way along Okay, so I've given all the platforms an even coat of uh, PVA, uh, the bond, bonding type glue uh, is better all the way along. Okay, so what I've got is a, 
another full length piece of plasterboard uh, again trimmed both ends and I've cut the width for this to allow at least a couple of inch overhang either side of the uh, the main platform that I've or the base that I've just laid on the uh, on the layout. I'm going to place that down on top of there and um, then just leave that overnight. I'm going to stick a few weights down on top of this just so it all stays uh, in place and uh, obviously the glue dries. Okay, so the glue's now dry and I've screwed a batten to the top and that um, enables me to be able to lift it up without causing any damage to the um, the top full layer of plasterboard because the, the lower parts made up of sections if I was to lift it up it could obviously break with the uh, plasterboard that's been placed down on the top So the idea of this now is to follow the line of uh, the lower sections of plasterboard uh, with a Stanley knife. Same principle of cutting plasterboard, just say with a knife, flip it over and then break them. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is um, run along the edges again with the surform plane, making sure that these are all uh, nice and flush all the way along. So as you can see with um, with the timber batten attached to it, it makes it easier just to keep it rigid and uh, stop any of the plasterboard crumbling away. So I'm happy with the edges of those. I've run the surform plane over them. If for any reason you get quite a large overlap of paper um, where you've uh, planed off the uh, plasterboard edge, um, I tend just to get a pair of scissors and just trim these pieces away. Okay, so it's uh, pretty vital at this point that um, you seal all edges of the plasterboard. So these edges and obviously the back and the top as well. And what I'm going to use is uh, some old masonry paint, which is what I've used on all the baseboard anyway. Um, this is slightly diluted down, so it will require a good couple of coats. The first one will soak in and then I'll just apply another one to the top reason with, uh, for doing this will obviously seal away, uh, seal against the moisture and it will also help um, when it comes to ballasting and you're using diluted glue that it doesn't soak into the plasterboard. Okay so that's now had a complete coat of um, masonry paint all the way around and um, just popped it down into position to make sure I'm happy with all the clearances and uh, Everything seems okay, so. So for all of the um, platform edges and the capping stones, um, I'm using Slater's Plasticard. Uh, this is, I believe, the English Bond uh, brick effect card. Uh, comes in red, and uh, I've given these a quick weathering. Uh, you can be as random as you like with the weathering on these. I will probably show a how-to video in the future on how to weather uh, plastic card. Also, um, for the platform edges, St. David's Station does have two different types of um, 
edging stones um, more towards the actual platform ramps uh, you have the dress stone effect and then the remainder of the platforms are all brick for the um, slabs that sit on top of the platform edges again I'm using Slater's plastic card uh, this is the paving slab effect uh, these have been weathered and um, the video for those is in um, the back to the start of it all series uh, the last episode of that went up um, I think which is episode 5 so if you want to know how to weather these pop over and check out that video so as you can see I've weathered these it makes life easier to actually weather the plastic card before you actually fit them um, apart from the first couple of bits that I put on as a test I will weather those um, in situ so not a problem with those but uh, you could be as random as you like with the weathering and as you see it all kind of matches in and creates that illusion that it's all covered by all the uh, usual railway grime so what I'm going to do is just run these through a paper guillotine uh, cutting these at around about uh, as close to the 19 millimeters as you can I've uh, done them a little bit shorter but um, it doesn't matter because most of the bottom part of it will be covered by ballast anyway Before I get going, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a sanding block and just run that along the edges just to remove any lumpy bits of uh, paint or plasterboard so you've got a nice smooth even surface mainly along the top where the uh, capping stones like this will sit along the top of there you want to get that as flat as you possibly can. So I've uh, taken the platform off the baseboard and uh, just laid it upright uh, just so I can get the um, platform edges on which will be the back side of the platform away from where I can see. Once I've got that side on I'll put the platform back and then fix it permanently in position. So what I'm going to do is um, start with uh, laying the plastic card on there. Uh, I'm just going to leave it slightly short from the uh, end of the platform as the rest of this will be the um, dress stone effect plastic card. So to glue these down, flip them over, um, sticking with the usual mitre fast quick setting glue I'm going to put a steady amount of uh, of the glue on the back of the plastic card and then using the mitre fast spray and just making sure that you the brick to the top edge of the platform and there you go simple as that and then what I try and do next is to try and get a, a fairly decent match on the next piece as you see there you got you got the white um, of the brick sort of the mortar joints and that blends in quite nicely with the um, existing part that I've just uh, put down. So there we go, that's the, the back edge of the platform. The edge in brick, all in and installed. So what I've done is now the platforms are fixed in place. I'm going to fix the rest of the plastic card. making sure that I keep in line with the, uh, the first piece I laid on the other side. Mm. 
So for um, the platform edge uh, capping stones, I've uh, cut the um, plastic card into the uh, recommended strips and these will go along the top like so and again just using the same the same method of the uh, glue I'm just going to glue along its edge And then just uh, use a mitre bond glue, uh, the uh, spray, just to activate the glue. I'm just going to pop this down on the edge of the platform. And just pushing the coach through just to make sure you've got the clearances perfect So there we go, I've um, installed up to the point as far as I can go for now until I get the uh, ramps in place. Happy with the clearances, um, just about right. With building the ramps, um, what I'm simply going to use um, is some plastic card. I'm going to pop that down into position. mark them up as the same way as um, marking off all the other platform sections. Once I'm uh, happy with the, um, the shape of the actual ramp itself I'm just gonna glue that piece of plastic card down. So what I'm going to use now is the um, brushed, uh, the dressed stone effect edging. Offering it up to um, where it needs to be. And with a permanent marker pen I'm just going to position on the back of the plastic card where the actual ramp begins. 
and I will draw from that line from there down to nothing. So just like that, um, that's the ramp itself. So to keep the um, the actual ramps, uh, the plastic part of the ramps in in position, what I'm going to do is just glue a very small piece of plastic card in position. Like so. And then again, with a dab of glue just down the side. That'll keep it all nicely in position so none of it comes away all. So that's basically the uh, construction of the ramps, uh, just for good measure. Pop a piece of plasterboard in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I've um, got some filler and I'm just going to get all that inside. with a piece of timber just gonna get as much of that scrape as much away as you can using the uh, ramps or the plastic car from the ramps as like a guide just to Get the profiling right on it and uh, leave that to dry. This will probably take um, a good few hours to completely set and um, then I'll come back to that and show you the next stages after that's done. So I've um, completed the slabs on top uh, all the way down both ramps and what I'm going to do now is mask these pieces off. So I've got this uh, precision masking tape and uh, it's perfect for fine detail work so the aim is to tape up and protect these platform edges. Okay, so now I've masked it all off, the next job is to get rid of the edge that you see along the back of uh, where the plastic card is. And I'm using a product called Easy Fill for this, which is uh, designed for plasterboard in mind so it's uh, nice and easy to fill and really easy to rub down as well so now the aim of it in between the two pieces is to not have it going all the way along but feather it out either side so you kind of when you come to rub down you're just going to rub at an angle Okay, so the fillers have plenty of time to dry. What I'm going to use is one of these sanding blocks. Um, I've sort of used this uh, to wear it in a little bit rather than using something straight out of the box. And uh, just going to go over now and give it all a good rub down.
So just as a um, temporary surface, what I'm going to do is uh, repaint back over the uh, filler with grey paint. Um, and then I'm going to remove the masking tape. Uh, this is by no means the actual finish surface on any of these platforms. Um, I will be doing a feature uh, sometime in the future which will show the uh, full tarmac effect on these uh, platform tops. So there you go, that pretty much concludes this how-to video. So as usual, uh, any queries or questions, pop them down in the uh, comment section and uh, let me know your thoughts. And I shall be back relatively soon with another video. Thanks for watching.